Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is fisheries biologist Russ Kinsler, who oversees the salmon spawning program here at Game and Fish. Russ, uh, you got crews working back here. Explain the whole process of salmon spawning. Okay, right now what we have behind us is we're uh, spawning salmon. Um, we have a, a, a group of actually Valley City students that have come down to gain some experience, so they're helping us today. Um, the fish they're spawning uh, were collected on Lake Sakakawea. Uh, we have a shocker boat actually up there right now, uh, shocking fish, and they will bring them down here to, for us to uh, sort to make sure they're mature and ready, and then, uh, then we'll spawn them. Um, we also catch fish uh, in the tail race below the dam. We'll shock a little bit down there, but we also have fish that come back up the hatchery stream, which basically the water leaving the hatchery they'll swim up that and we have a trap set up to catch them there. So that's how we collect the fish for the spawning. Um, the actual spawning like they're doing behind us now is what we'll do is we have the males and the females sorted. Um, we'll dip them out of the raceway and check to make sure they're ready. And when they're ready, we'll bring uh, first we'll bring a batch of males up and collect the milt from the males. Then we'll go get a batch of females and we'll check them as we're taking them out of the raceway to make sure they're ready. And then the ones that are will get brought up here and we'll uh, basically extract the eggs from them. What happens once the eggs are collected here? Okay, they, they will, they actually treat the eggs in an iodine solution first, which basically disinfects the, the egg, the outside and the inside of the egg. Then they will put them up in hatching, or in incubating jars, and they'll stay in those jars for about 28 days, depending on the temperature of the water. At that point, they will move them out towards the, the, the raceways, and they'll put them in different jars, where hatching jars. So. Once the fish start hatching, they will swim up and out of the jars and then into troughs in the, in the tanks. And they'll get raised in them troughs until they're a little bit bigger and can swim you know, pretty good on their own. And then they'll get put in the bigger, bigger raceways to get, to get raised up. Okay, so the salmon come back to the same spot. How do, we, how do you know where to go find the salmon in Lake Scotia? Yeah. Salmon generally return to where they were born. I mean, that's, that's their, a salmon's history is that when they spawn, the, the young ones return to that basically the exact same spot where they were born. Well, in North Dakota, that's Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery. So the, we raise the fish to a size big enough now that they're imprinting on the hatchery. Um, so the fish in the lake are basically returning to Garrison Dam, or the bays closest to it, which is as close as they can get to the hatchery. The fish below the dam are, like I said, swimming up the hatchery channel, the water released from the dam, trying to get back to the hatchery. So. Sure, we should talk about that. It's a cooperation between the North Dakota Game Fish and the Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery? Yes, um, without the, the Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery, you know, we, we can't do it ourselves. So we collect the fish um, and bring them in and then they help us spawn. And then they actually raise the, hatch the fish and raise the fish. And then in late April and May, early May, when they're ready to get stocked back in the lake, we will come down and get the fish and then we'll take them back and stock them in the lake. So. It's a joint effort to, to get salmon into the Lake Skakawea in North Dakota. Russ, how many fish, male and females, do we need to have a successful uh, spawning effort? When we spawn the salmon, we, use, we try to use one male to one female. Um, so to get 1.5 million eggs, we need to collect about 750 females. And with that, we'll get about 650 that are good females, and that should give us that 1.5 million eggs. We haven't, we haven't used the salmon ladder for how many years now, and why don't we use that ladder? You still get questions on that, don't you? We get questions every year. It's 10 or 11 years now since we last used the ladder. Um, when we quit using it, it was because fuel prices spiked, um, and diesel fuel got really expensive, and, it's, and it was you know, just not feasible to do it anymore. Plus, we've learned over the years that some years the ladder worked really good, but some years it didn't, so we ended up shocking fish anyway. So we have just gone to just strictly shocking because we know we can get them that way. Sure. Why is this process so important for the salmon fishery in Lake Skakawea? Okay, as, as everybody knows, salmon are not native to North Dakota. So in order to maintain salmon in North Dakota, we don't have the naturally flowing streams that they would like to spawn in. So we have to go out and collect the fish and spawn them. Otherwise, in a matter of three or four, uh, four or five years, they would all die out and salmon would no longer live in North Dakota. So without this process? There's no salmon in North Dakota. Okay, what's the goal for this year? How many eggs do you plan on collecting? Uh, we're, we're planning to collect 1.5 to 1.7 million eggs um, to help us with a, a stocking of four to 500,000 salmon next year. Okay, a lot of good information, Russ, thank you. Thank you. 
If you were lucky enough to draw a deer tag this year and you haven't received your tag in the mail, deer hunters are reminded of a state law that requires hunters to purchase a general game and habitat license before receiving their deer tag. The North Dakota Game and Fish will only mail deer tags after the general game and habitat license is purchased. You can purchase the general game and habitat license by going to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For fisheries biologist Russ Kinsler and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.